for today's assignment, we're going to talk about how to handle different types of data that's all related, but it's not the same. So for a quick review, we use a list to collect a large number of values, and those values collected can change from run to run. So our list is not going to be the same. It can be different every time we run the program. A list is actually stored in the computer's memory, so remember it's over there in the computer's memory and the name or identifier is a reference to that actual list. The list is the fundamental mechanism in Python for collecting multiple values. These values or elements are stored in sequential order and the list can grow or shrink in size. It can store any kind of data, so you can have integers, floats, strings, booleans, you can even have lists of lists. But the thing to remember is that in each list, all the elements should be related. So if I'm doing names, all the elements should be names. If I'm doing ages, all the elements should be ages. And I really shouldn't mix the two. This so can be, get pretty complicated when you're trying to do other things with the list if the data stored in the list is different types. And they still might be related, but if they're not the same, they shouldn't be in the same list. So here's some examples of where we're going to need to do something a little bit different. We need to create a separate list for each type. For example, if I have a person and their test score, and I actually want to keep the person's name with the test score together, I can't, I shouldn't do that in one list. I'm going to need to take two lists and work with them together. Same thing with maybe I have a date and a temperature, first name, last name, maybe I have a name and an age, and even more information than that. Maybe I have name, age, grade. Everything, even though it's related, it's all different types, so each one is going to need its own list. But I want to keep it in the same order, so the name and the age would have the same index, just with two separate lists. So we're going to work on a program that's going to take some related information, but that's of different data types, and we're going to have a different list for each type, but we're going to work on it together so that each element has the same index that's all related. Let's work on a program together. Sample program by declaring a function that's going to fill two lists at the same time because they do have related information just as each information is different data type. So we're going to do one for month and temperature. The month is a string, temperature is a number. I want to keep them together so they're going to have the same index but they need to be in two different lists. Let's work on a fill list uh, function. And it's going to have two parameters because I'm going to use two lists. So I'm going to keep the, the names really general so I can use this particular function with any program. I don't if I put the particular name in, then it kind of limits me. So I'm going to use A list and B list. And I just need to keep track of which one is which. I'm going to use A list for months and B list for temperatures. First I'm going to ask how many, so let's just get a like a max number here. And of course it's an integer. Okay, so how many temperatures? I could say how many entries. Okay. Then I can use this max number in my for loop. So for i in range, max num. And I'm going to ask for two things instead of just one. I'm going to ask for the month and for the temperature. The month is a string. So I don't need to use the int in front of it. In fact, I'll get an error if I do. So I'm just going to have my input statement. Um, enter month. And then I'm going to have another one for the temperature. I'm going to call it degrees. And this one is an integer, so I need to use int. We don't use strings a lot, so just have to kind of think about it a little bit. I have my two values. I'm going to ask for them together, month degrees, so I can keep track of them. I don't want to ask for all the months and then all the degrees. That uh, would be a lot more difficult. Now that I have them, I'm going to append them. So a list.append for month and b list.append for degrees. So I've just created my two lists and filled them with entries from the user. Let's also talk about how I can print these. So I will have two, A list and B list again. And I know how to print just a single one. Uh, I know how to do it by value and by index. 
since I have two lists, I can't really do it by value because it would be the value of just one list, but what about the other one? So we're going to do it by index. And it doesn't really, the lists have the same number of elements, so it doesn't matter which one I use for the length. I could use A list or B list. So for I in range, and let's just do the len of A list. Well, once again, it shouldn't matter. Now I want to print. So I can print the element at A list. So I'm going to access the element, remember to use square brackets, and I is my index, and then I can do a comma B list. And then the same thing, I'm going to use I for both of them. Let's kind of just see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and do my main right now. And for my main, I need two lists. I'm going to have a month list. I started as an empty and a temp list. And then I want to call the fill list with month list and temp list in that order. And I want to get them mixed up. And I want to print. Let's just see how this goes and if we want to make any little changes. So how many temperatures? Just, let's just do three. So let's do January, and say 85, February 89, and March 92. Okay, and there they are. So it looks pretty good. If I want to make them kind of nice, neat columns, I can add in a tab. So I'm going to come right here. And if I want to add in a tab, I kind of have to make everything strings. Now A list is already a string because it's months, and B list is um, an integer, so I'm going to make it a string by using the string function. And then I'm going to use the plus, so now that everything's a string, and I'm going to use um, a backslash, so I have to have it in quotation marks, the backslash and a T for tab. And this will just tab it, so a little bit more space in between. So let's try this again. Let's just do three temperatures. January, let's say 45. February, 38. And March, uh, 56. See how it gave me an extra space in there? It was like a tab. So I can have some nice, neat columns this way. It makes it look good when I print. I can also get an average of my temperatures. And all this kind of has to do with results. So let's add in another function here. I don't want my main to ever get too big. I can divide it up into lots of functions. So I'm going to have a results function, which will call print list and do anything else that I want it to do. So I'm going to have A list and B list. And the first thing I'm going to happen in, in this is actually to print my list. Okay, so let's just change this from here. here but the difference I have now is I don't have month and temp I have a list and B list I've made it really generic so I can reuse this code and then I want to print the average of my B list so let's give myself a little bit of room and I know how to find the average because I can use I can use list functions I can use the sum and the len So I have um, the sum of B list. I'm going to make it into a float, so times 1.0 divided by the len of B list. And then if I want to add in like a little heading to this, I can even do print temperature or month and temperature list. That was kind of user friendly there. Now, of course, I've, since I've created this new function, I need to call it, so results, and this is where I'm going to put in month and temp list, so I've left it generic up there. And with just this little modification, let's see how it goes. Let's do five temperatures this time, and I'll do January a couple of times, it'll be alright. February. So I have my nice little header, I've got my columns, and I've got my average temperature.
everything's working pretty good. Now we're going to add in one more thing, something that's a little bit new. I'm going to compare to see if I've got some duplicate temperatures in here. And this list, I don't really have any duplicates, but maybe if I see the temperature 85 more than one time, that's something I can kind of make note of. So I'm going to do a compare temperatures uh, function. We're going to just kind of look to compare from one to another and see if I have any duplicates. All this compare temps. I just need one list this time. I don't need the months, although I could compare how many times I entered different months. Well, I'm just going to look at the temperatures right now. So I'm going to compare my temps. Now, what I don't want to do is sort my list. Because if I sort this list, then the temperature no longer matches up with the month that it was. If this is sorted, things get rearranged. 45 would be first and go with January. That wouldn't work very well. Same thing as I don't want to sort this list because then they get mixed up. If I'm going to do a sort, I have to sort them at the same time so that the temperature and the month stay together. So I'm going to make a copy of my temperature and then I'm going to sort it. So I'm going to do a copy list. And remember to make a copy, I actually use the function called list. And I'm going to sort this. Now sort is a method, so make sure that you use the proper dot notation. And for the rest of this function, I'm going to use copy list instead of vlist. Now that I have a copy of it, I can sort it and I can just kind of use this to compare to see if I have any duplicates. Now I can't uh, use a for loop. I do need. I'm going to be uh, accessing the index, and I'm going to take the first element, which is at index zero, and compare it to the second element, which is at index one. And then I'm going to check to see if they match. And if they do, I can increment a counter. Then I'm going to increment my index. I'm going to go to element one, element at index one, and compare it to element at index two. Check to see if it's a match. And then I'm just going to go up my list. Compare two to three. Compare three to four. So I'm going to traverse my list by index, and I need a counter variable to do this. It's actually going to represent my index. So I'm going to call it index. I'm going to start it at zero, because so I'm going to start with the zero element and go all the way up through the list. I'm going to use a while loop, because my length of the list could change. Now, I'm not actually manipulating the list in any way right now, but I want to do a general algorithm. So maybe later I wanted to add to the list or delete duplicates. And that would change the length of my list. And when you start a for loop, that length is set at when you start the loop. So I'm going to use a while loop so I can check every time just to see what the length is. So y on my index is less than the length of my copy list. Now I do, this would take me all the way through the list to the last element. But if I'm going to the last element, what am I comparing it to? There's nothing past that. So you have to be a little bit careful. I actually want to stop one pat, one before the last element that I'll be, com be comparing to the last element. So my while loop will look like this. Now I'm going to access the elements. So you're going to use square brackets. So if copy list and then of the index, I'm accessing that value is the same. So equals equals copy list at the next one, which is index plus one. So you see how I'm comparing what's at index zero to what's at index one. If they are the same, I'm going to increment a counter. So I need to have a counter. I'm going to call it dupes for duplicate. It starts off at zero. And then if it is the same, I'm going to increment dupes plus equals one. And if it's not the same, nothing has to happen. Once it's finished this first iteration, I need to increment my index, otherwise I'm in an infinite loop. So index plus equals one. I'm going to now I'm going to compare What's the value at element one, index one to and to the value at index two, and then I'm going to increment. I'm going to take the value at index two, compare it to the value of index three, and go and traverse my entire list, just counting. Once I'm finished, I could um, either pass dupes in, or I can return it and just make this a return function. So I'm going to return dupes. That means when I call compare temps here in my main, I have to assign it to something. So I've got a little line of code right here, dupes equals compare temps with my temp list. Now I also want to print this out, so let's take a look at results. I can add in my dupes 
and I can add in a line that would print out the duplicates. The number of duplicate temperatures. And that would be dupes. Now I've added a parameter, so here when I call results, I need to add in an argument. Dupes. And there we go. So let's try this. Let's try five temperatures. I'm going to put in 80 a couple of times. Okay, so it says duplicate temperatures too. You might be saying, well, why doesn't it say three times? The first time it's not a duplicate. So this time is a duplicate and this time is a duplicate. So it's not going to count the original. It's just going to count how many more times it was duplicated. So in this program, we used multiple lists to keep track of re related values that were different types. So I had to have different lists for them. I could also compare values to see if they were the same. I, did, I made a copy and I did a sort. And then I could just compare element by element, the first with the second, the second with the third, and so on and so forth. I can print. I just need one function to print no matter how many I have. I can add in a tab. And I can do some results, I can get some averages, and all of this with a really small main function. So I've used a lot of good code. Now your program is going to be finished when you add a few more things to it. So let's just take a look at your final program that you're going to be turning in. Now that we worked on some assignments, some programming together that dealt with multiple lists, I want you to keep this program and you're going to add a few things to it before you turn it in. This is going to be the multiple lists program. In order for this program to, to be complete, you should have three lists. One for the month, one for the date, and one for the temperature. But you're keeping all the related information together with the same index. You should be able to print the information in columns and display any number of duplicate temperatures and then also print the average temperature for the dates listed. So we've done most of this together. There's just a few things you're going to need to add.